Hey guys, welcome back to Prognition, and with Apple's new announcement of iOS 14, we're going to be comparing iOS 14 with Android and Android 11 specifically, so keep watching. The first one we're talking about is the widgets. Now widgets aren't something very new to smartphones and even to the iPhone. We've had them before and they sit on that today happening page on the extreme left on the iPhone when you scroll and they usually just sat there and gave you information from different applications and things happening throughout your day. However, with the iOS 14 edition and update, you're going to be able to move these widgets around anywhere on the home screen and they're a lot more customizable than just being stuck in a corner there. So what you're going to be able to do now is move them around anywhere on the home screen, place them, pin them, and you're going to be able to interact with them whenever you unlock your device and you're on the home screen. So that's a really great addition to iOS 14. On Android, however, widgets have been around for the longest time. It's kind of part and parcel of what Android really is, especially people who have been using it for the longest time, we kind of are used to this already. This isn't something very new. A lot of people who use Android use these widgets every single day and they've customized them in various different ways because of how much options we get from developers for different applications to be used as widgets. So when it comes to sizing, customization, different types of widgets, the looks of the widgets, Android kind of already has done all of that. With the upgrade to Android 11, we're gonna see more changes with the notification center, with the media controls, where you'll be able to add in more widgets there as well. Now the second change we're gonna be talking about, which is probably the biggest one, is gonna be the app library. Now whenever you have an iPhone, install a new application, it goes right there on the home screen and you have to scroll through to find that application added on. This was very unique to the iPhone and other phones try to copy it as well, but it was a very iPhone thing to have your applications right there on the home screen and scrolling through them, holding down to move them around. That was a very iPhone thing. Now with the new version of the iOS, you're gonna get more customization where you're allowed to group these together for easier navigation and moving around. Now this isn't a very new feature, definitely not a very new feature. We've seen other phones do this before. However, it's gonna be interesting to see how Apple implements this. They're gonna have various subfolders created for you and also a great addition for people who don't like a lot of clutter. You're gonna be able to hide few pages once you get into that wiggle mode. You can turn off some pages so you have like two or three pages just to see stuff and then the app drawer controls the rest. So we're very much looking forward to this and see how Apple does this. Now when Apple was talking about the app library, it sounded very familiar to the app drawer. Now Android has had the app drawer for the longest time as well and you get different launchers as well to be able to customize your app drawer and there are different applications and third-party applications you can install as well to customize your app drawer. Now some drawers will give you the same ability as the iPhone to have the endless swipe or you have the endless scroll as well. There's also customization based on types and what they're for like productivity, camera, photography, all these customizations are built in as well but the way that Apple is implementing it might be very different from how Android does it, but it's gonna be very interesting to see how they have their organizations sorted out for both operating systems. Interestingly enough, Apple is also implementing suggested applications, which are applications you use on a daily basis, which Android also has been doing for a while now. And with Android 11, as we talked about previously, that's gonna be added to the home screen as well, as that separate section of apps that you use all the time. The third change we're gonna be seeing is in Apple's favorite iMessage. So messaging on iPhone is one of the reasons people purchase iPhones to begin with. So they're bringing some refresh changes that we've seen in other applications for messaging before to the iMessage application itself. With this update, you're gonna be able to pin nine conversations in your conversation list for easy access in the future. We've seen this with other applications like WhatsApp. This one allows you to do the same thing where you can pin specific favorite chats to the top so you can go back to them whenever you need to, which is great for easy access and streamlining your messaging. The second thing you'll be able to do is mention a contact name to direct a message and receive notifications from specific contacts as well. This is great again for streamlining things, like I said, and also making your messaging experience a lot easier and smoother. Lastly, this is a feature that we've seen on a lot of messaging apps like Skype, Slack, or even WhatsApp, where within a group message, you can reply to specific people with inline replies, and also notifications can coming to you for the entire group chat or only when your name is mentioned. This is great for people who are in multiple groups but don't want to be bombarded with notifications and only want to check them when it's something to do with them with their name being mentioned. All right, let's admit it. Apple's got the iMessage, which is probably the better messaging for a lot of people, which is why they choose to get the iPhone as well. On Android, however, you don't really have its built-in application for messaging as good as iPhones. 
So you're stuck to using these third party applications like WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, Skype, Telegram, all these other applications. But with Android 11, you have the ability to customize all of these applications, these third party applications into chat bubbles whenever you receive notifications. And that is the only change coming to messages with Android 11. The next change we're gonna be seeing is with the voice assistant, that is Siri. So in this edition and upgrade to Siri, we're gonna have a major overhaul in the UI design for it. Previously, when you called on Siri, you were transported to the voice assistant Siri page where you got all the answers and had your interaction with Siri. With this new update, it's gonna lie wherever, whichever screen you're on, Siri is gonna pop up at the bottom of that screen and tell you that she's listening to you and be able to assist you right from there. Also, with this new update, Siri is gonna be a lot more helpful rather than telling you here's what I found on the internet or here's what I found on Google. So that's really great and it's gonna be more useful to people who actually interacted with Siri more while they were driving their car or basically interacting with Siri on a day-to-day -day basis. When it comes to voice assistants on smartphones, in my opinion, Google Assistant still is the best just because of the responses and the database for the information being a lot deeper and more reliable. When it comes to Siri, a lot of the queries from the user cannot be answered and it has to Google those results for the user. But with Google, on the other hand, because of the implementation and integration to the database, it's a lot easier for the user to interact with the information given to them, even up to the point of using your smartphone as a voice box activated system, which is really great with the update coming to Android 11. The next thing we're gonna be talking about is the notification center. Now the notification center does not really change a lot from update to update. They make very few changes because they do it pretty well already. But with this edition, you're gonna be able to add in widgets and customize the sizing and make it look a lot more your style within the notification center itself. So if you want more customization to your widgets within the notification center, you're gonna be allowed to do that with iOS 14. Good stuff. The notification center itself does not get a lot of major changes on Android updates. However, like we talked about in the Android 11 video, which we're gonna link up somewhere here, you guys can see all the main changes coming in were there just to streamline the way you receive notifications on Android 11. It's more based on chat messages, which are conversational, and there's alerting messages, which are basically everything else, and also silent messages, which are notifications that you don't want disturbing you and your phone knows are low priority. So that's more streamlined, and it's gonna be interesting to see how that implementation is comparable to iOS's version. Now, if you guys are interested in knowing all of the Android 11 updates and changes, we made an entirely separate video. We're gonna link that up somewhere here for you guys to check out. So definitely give that a look as well if you're interested in knowing what's changed. Now, previously using an iPhone or an iPad, whenever you would get a call, it would take over the whole screen, whether you wanna answer the call or decline the call. This can be a little bit annoying for people because you lose track of what you're doing if you're in a train of thought using an application. It kind of just takes you away from that and you're forced to decide what you wanna do with this call. With iOS 14, you're gonna have a banner style notification for this where you can accept or decline the call. So it's more of an alert notification style thing rather than you have to focus on this information right now, stop doing whatever you're doing kind of thing. The second thing we're gonna be talking about is the picture in picture mode. A lot of people love this, myself included, and it's really great to see them bring it to the iPhone. When it comes to the compact UI on Android side of things, when you get a call, it's pretty much the same thing as Apple just announced where you have the reject or accept right there at the top so you don't have to get out of the app. It doesn't take over the whole screen. Android has had this for a while now. The customization of UI isn't really big. It's more of the ability to use your phone as a tablet. If it's bigger, maybe you can rotate it horizontally and you get that tablet view. But that's the only change that we're seeing in the UI of Android with this generation. As far as picture in picture is concerned, yeah, Android has that. Now, these are just the changes that we're seeing in iOS 14 for the iPhone specifically. We aren't really going into details about the MacBook or the iPad. If you guys wanna see a video like that, do let us know in the comments and we'll make a full video summing up all the features coming to this new generation of iPhones and Apple in general. If you guys do want that, just let us know in the comments. But thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button and do consider subscribing for more content just like this. And we'll see you again in the next video.